Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics collaboration with Liver and Digestive Diseases Clinic. This was a very interesting case and that is why we decided to present it in the Mumbai GI meeting and put up in our EduSurge Clinics platform for sharing experiences. So this case is a patient basically with a neuroendocrine liver metastasis and we have labeled it an enigma. Let us see why. So this patient presented first to Dr. Prasad Vagle in 2013 when she was 46 year old with no comorbidities. She had colicky abdominal pain for 2-3 to three months and postprandial fullness. She had no weight loss and no loss of appetite and no gastrointestinal bleed. Ultrasound and abdomen and pelvis was done outside which showed liver lesions which were likely metastatic but no primary site was visible. CT abdomen and pelvis was done which showed hyper enhancing lesion in terminal ileum with multiple liver metastasis with features suggestive of neuroendocrine neoplasm. So if we can see the DOTA PET CT images of the patient, the left one is the CT image and the right one is the corresponding DOTA image which shows a classical spoke wheel appearance of the lesion. The spoke wheel appearance is seen in the mesentery due to clumping of vasculature and the lesion can be seen lighting up on the DOTA scan which suggests that it is an early, early grade good prognosis lesion. She had liver metastasis in segment 7, segment 5 and 8 junction or basically the right anterior sector of the liver as well as a lesion in segment 6. So if we see the WHO 2019 classification for gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine neoplasm, this patient predominantly falls in a grade 1 or an early grade 2 disease because each lesion is lighting up on the DOTA scan which shows an early grade disease and the mitotic count probably would be less than 2 or 2 to 20 in this patient. Coming to neuroendocrine liver metastasis, type 1 is a restricted or unilobar type of neuroendocrine liver metastasis which our patient had because she had diseases in segment 5, 6, 7 and 8 which is the right side of the liver. Apart from this, neuroendocrine liver metastasis can be type 2 which is bilobar but predominantly in one lobe. Uh, as for example, she has lesions in 5, 6, 7, 8 and she may have a small lesion in segment 4 or 2 that is type 2 or dominant bilobar disease. Type 3 is where it is difficult to decide which side of the liver is dominant and hence it is known as diffuse multifocal neuroendocrine liver metastasis. So our patient probably had a grade 1 or early grade 2 neuroendocrine neoplasm of the terminal ileum with type 1 liver metastasis. Just to summarize, this is a 46 year old female with small bowel neuroendocrine neoplasm with type 1 liver metastasis. She is symptomatic as she has pain. The lesions are non-functioning as there are no features of carcinoid syndrome and the lesion is DOTA positive, suggestive that it is early grade disease. Her chromogranin A which is a tumor marker for neuroendocrine neoplasm was 700 and her 2D echo did not show any features of carcinoid heart disease. Hence, she was planned for a small bowel resection, SOS limited right colectomy as the lesion was quite close to the ileocecal junction. Along with that, a right hepatectomy in simultaneous setting was planned. And she underwent this surgery successfully and was discharged with an uneventful post-operative period. The rationale was of this plan was that surgery is the only potentially curative option for neuroendocrine neoplasm with 5 year survival ranging between 60 to 80 percent. This patient did not need a downstaging as the disease was resectable to R0. So liver resection when it is resectable up to 90 percent of disease should be performed in such patients. These liver resections are usually performed in grade 1 and grade 2 disease because grade 3 is poor prognosis and chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment. Also, the patient should have an adequate future liver remnant that is around 40% and the patient should be otherwise fit. So, our patient is a 46-year-old female 
probably grade one or a grade two disease, and hence he did well with this simultaneous approach. Post surgery, the histopathology showed grade one neuroendocrine neo five liver lesions, and all margins were free. So she had a grade one metastatic neuroendocrine neoplasm. She followed up for one year, and after then was lost to follow up, and then she presented in twenty twenty one. With right and central upper abdominal pain and a lump in central of the upper abdomen for two months, with postprandial fullness, fatigue, and weight loss, and the chromogranin A, the tumor marker now was twenty nine sixty. This is the CT part of the DOTA PET done in twenty twenty one. We did not do an FDG because she is a biopsy pro one grade one neuroendocrine neoplasm, and in these patients, DOTA PET is better than FDG PET. So you can very easily see lesions in the entire left lateral segment of the liver, and interestingly, in these coronal images, you can see the arcing of the portal vein, which is of surgical relevance. So now, in 2021, this is a post right hepatectomy patient. That means that out of eight segments of liver, she does not have five, six, seven, and eight. She now has a recurrence of neuroendocrine liver metastases, which are DOTA positive, and segment two and three, as well as cut surface of segment four, have a few lesions. The lesions on the left lateral segment are palpable and symptomatic. So the perfect option for this patient would be a liver transplantation, but the family was not very keen on liver transplant. PRRT again. An option for this patient, but significant bulk of disease, and the opinion was that if we can reduce the bulk of the disease, the patient would do well with PRRT. Octreotide or somatostatin long-acting release injection again a very palliative option for this patient. A bold option would be a surgery where we can do a left lateral sectionectomy, but that means removing segment two and three of the liver when five, six, seven, and eight have already been re removed. So the patient would essentially be on segment four, as he did not have a very large caudate lobe. So we got a liver volumetry done, predominantly the segment four volume. For you can see that the caudate is essentially non-existent. If we see a non-tumor functioning liver volume, it was seventy seven fifty cc, out of which segment four functional residual volume was five one eight cc. Left lateral non-tumor volume was only 232 cc, whereas tumor volume was 732 cc. So she had an equal balance of functional liver volume and tumor volume. Hematologically, she had no albumin globulin reversal. Liver profile was normal, and she had no comorbidities except creatinine at upper limit of normal. Hence, we decided to go ahead with a left lateral sectionectomy, and the weight of the specimen was 1.2 kilograms. Histopathology again showed grade one neuroendocrine neoplasm with thirteen liver lesions in the left lateral section and eighty percent macrovascular steatosis. Till postoperative day five, she was recovering well. On postoperative day five, she had a marginal decompensation with bilirubin of three point two and direct bin two point two. Alkaline phosphatase showing two thirty. The drain was around four fifty cc of ascites. And creatinine was 2.1, CRP was normal, and urine output was maintained. We followed an expectant course in this patient. In the next 48 to 72 hours, the creatinine and bilirubin showed a marginal upward trend. However, the drain started to reduce, and it was 200 to 300 cc per day. CRP was normal, and hence she had no signs of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, wound infection, or chest infection. On postoperative day twelve, on conservative management, the bilirubin total and direct started reducing with the enzyme showing a downward trend. The drain was removed and the creatinine also started reducing. Thus, the patient had started to show compensation of the liver function. We managed her conservatively and on postoperative day fourteen, she was discharged. At follow up, the labs came to normal at one month of surgery and currently she is on the third injection of. long acting release somatostatic injection
So what was the key point in this patient is that grade 1 neuroendocrine neoplasm even at metastatic setting has good prognosis and surgery can be attempted if it is curative or debulking. Debulking should be up to 70 to 90 percent of the disease. One important point to remember here is that DOTA positive disease is usually grade 1 or early grade 2 and FDG PET positive disease is usually grade 2 or grade 3. FDG positivity on PET scan portends a poor prognosis whereas DOTA positivity on PET scan is a good sign but not prognostic. Simultaneous bowel plus major liver rejection is feasible and safe in neuroendocrine neoplasm as was performed in our patient. Our patient is doing well at 8 years of follow-up now. Neuroendocrine liver metastasis has variety of treatment options such as taste, tear, ablation, transplant as well as surgery and the sequence of treatment will differ in each patient. Peptide receptor radionuclide therapy or PRRT, octreotide injections are all good treatment options but if surgery is feasible especially in grade 1 and 2 disease, surgery is the best possible option. Liver resection for neuroendocrine liver metastasis needs extensive planning and this should be done only at centers which has all the facilities such as volumetry as well as a good hepatology backup for managing post-operative decompensation if it happens. Our patient was planned extensively with a hepatology team involved and she is currently essentially living on segment 4 of liver for she had undergone a right hepatectomy in 2013 and now a left lateral sectionectomy in 2021. Long term follow up and longer intervals is essential in neuroendocrine neoplasm patients as these patients do tend to survive more than 10 to 15 years also and recurrences can present later like it presented in our patients at 8 years of follow up. Post operative liver decompensation should be prevented by extensive planning of surgery. However, if it occurs, it can be managed with supportive care as was done in our case. Remember that this is not equivalent to postoperative liver failure and the term has been revised to be called as postoperative liver decompensation wherein the patient can have mild alteration in liver function with or without ascites for up to 3 months after surgery. If you have any questions on this case or its management or pertaining to neuroendocrine neoplasms, feel free to send us your queries on these email IDs or in the comment section in the YouTube below. We will be discussing neuroendocrine neoplasms in detail in our upcoming videos as well. Thank you.